I'd like to thank the organizer for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak in front of you. Uh, so, this is for the title. This is the plan of my presentation. Uh, I will start with uh, roughly and general motivations, and then we we'll switch to lattice of projections and uh, the Boolean subalgebras sub of these lattice in quantum mechanics. <coughs> then I will show how they generate uh, shifts or Boolean valued models. Um, of uh, ZFC and then uh, I will indicate how uh, one could argue that this result in an exotic smooth structure on R4. So this, this is for the uh, <coughs> general motivations. Uh, these are the obvious questions that uh, are asked in the theoretical physics. Uh, can we model the microscale the same uh, in the same way as uh, as the micro scale uh, for example is there only one object of real numbers or are they uh, frame dependent uh, this was discussed uh, a couple of times uh, during the, the <coughs> during uh, this day and uh, perhaps there is a question should we then stay inside one model or one category uh, probably no <laughs> it's, it's Maybe it's not very surprising, but it's surprising how this, uh, all these can be related in, in some way. So uh, this, is based, uh, this presentation is based mainly on the uh, joint work with uh, Jerzy Król, Torsten Asselmeyer Maluga and Paweł Klimasara. Uh, and it appeared in, in the universe, in the uh, journal universe, uh, at the beginning of this year. So. Uh, <coughs> If we assume that the uh, space-time at large scale is by um, Rn, and that this, uh, the, the second assumption is that the smooth structure of this space-time is to be driven by initial singularity, uh, and this uh, singularity, as we suppose, that is quantum, so it, sh it should be described by the lattice of projections uh, corresponding to this, uh, to this quantum system, then this smoothness should be uh, exactly an exotic Rn. Then two, uh, two important conclusions uh, come. So the space time should be first uh, uh, four dimensional. Uh, for the first and for the second, it should be curved. But this will be uh, put uh, to the end of the presentation. So uh, let me start with, uh, mm, with an initial singularity. So for simplicity and generality, I, we suppose that the, uh, the singularity is uh, described by the ordinary quantum mechanics. Of course, there comes the argument that uh, it should be described uh, fully by uh, some kind of quantum gravity, but nevertheless, uh, let's suppose that the quantum mechanics is the um, important ingredient uh, of this description. So we have a separable Hilbert space of states, um, operators on, the, on that Hilbert space and so on and so on. But the most important thing for us uh, in this structure will be, uh, uh, will be closed subspace, equivalently uh, projections on this Hilbert space, and we know that they, uh, together with operations of meet and join, uh, they constitute what is called a complete orthomodular lattice. So we have uh, L for short, this is the uh, <coughs> This is the uh, space of projections, uh, mid join, and the um, projections on the empty subspace, projection on the uh, full Hilbert space, and this is the ortho complement, which is just uh, one minus uh, projection on the orthogonal uh, subspace of the, um, of the uh, given subspace. Uh, okay. Uh, the first fact that we know about the uh, uh, OML for short, for this uh, complete orthomodular lattice. So the first fact that we, uh, we're sure about OML is that uh, it comes to the uh, Boolean algebra whenever it is distributive. So uh, if we would like to um, interpret this OML as a quantum logic of a system, then we know that it becomes classi classical exactly when it becomes uh, a Boolean algebra when it is distributive. Uh, but importantly, it was shown by Birkhoff and von Neumann that it is almost uh, 
uh, almost always non-Boolean. So for uh, if dimension of, of our Hilbert space is greater or equal to, it, it is always non-distributive in this form. Also, there is a, uh, there's no good candidate for, for the implication operator in this quantum logic. Um, <coughs> there are some uh, substitutes, but none of them uh, crea creates uh, the, the, the implication counterpart for, the, uh, for, our, uh, for our known uh, implication, known from classical logic. So, uh, in principle, what one could go with this uh, OML as a logical structure and compose a so-called quantum set theory, which was um, uh, made first time by Takeuchi. Uh, but there, there's uh, really one, one obstacle. It is not ZFC model. So you cannot, do, uh, you cannot perform mathematics as usual in this model. And uh, I, I, we have a quotation from from Takeuchi itself, that the mathematics of quantum logic is too gigantic to see through clearly. So, but there is a way out. The way out, the way out is that we have uh, many complete Boolean algebras in L. And uh, if we talk about maximal ones, we'll call it blocks. So let this capital B will be a set of blocks in L. Um, so we quote a few facts. Each Boolean algebra inside L is contained in some block, and this block is not necessarily unique. Uh, it, it can be shown easily by, uh, by Tron's lemma. Um, the second important thing is that while L is always atomic, namely the atoms of, the, of this lattice are the uh, projections to the one-dimensional uh, subspaces, uh, some blocks can, blocks can be atomless. And the example is the <coughs> spectral res resolution for the uh, for the position operator on, on the real line. And then uh, we can formulate the spectral theorem uh, as general as we can, uh, so that if we have a family of pairwise commuting self adjoint operators on H, then there exists a block uh, such that if we give a spectral resolution for each uh, self adjoint A alpha, uh, all uh, spectral resolutions are inside this block. Okay, so uh, we would like to give this an interpretation. So, if we have a, a family of pairwise commuting self-adjoint operators, we know that this corresponds to uh, so-called so uh, classical or, or, or Boolean context, right? So, probably this will be uh, also covered in the in the next talk. Uh, so. Uh, the main point of this uh, theorem is that uh, each family will be contained in some uh, will be contained in some block in the sense of the spectral resolutions. Um, this is also the point that was mentioned in today's, uh, I believe, maybe two or three talks. Uh, so it was mentioned that uh, we can make a, a von Neumann's universe of sets uh, in terms of taking power sets of the of the empty set. Uh, so, this would be, uh, the, the von Neumann universe of sets would be equivalent to, uh, take, uh, to taking this, these constructions when the uh, Boolean algebra is just two valued, uh, just the base Boolean algebra with 0 and 1. And we can generalize this. So, if we have uh, any complete uh, Boolean algebra B, uh, we can generalize the von Neumann's um, constructions and uh, make, a, make a Boolean valued model uh, for this uh, complete Boolean algebra B. In fact, uh, the Boolean valued model is equivalent to the topos of shifts, the shift topos on B. Uh, and the second, the second important fact is that all ZFC axioms are, are valid in uh, in uh, V. Uh, so, uh, in a sense, we have a lattice of projections, the quantum mechanical lattice of projections, and we have uh, a plethora of uh, complete or maximal Boolean algebras inside, and for each such Boolean algebra, we can make a Boolean valued model of ZFC. So, uh, 
in a sense, uh, v to the l, this, this uh, gigantic structure, this gigantic model, can be covered in some sense by these uh, Boolean valued models uh, v to the b. Uh, well, if v to the b is a ZFC model, then we know that it one carries its own so-called mathematics. So, uh, 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 in particular, it carries its own notion of real numbers. Uh, yeah, now comes the, the famous uh, uh, theorem of Takeuchi, that there is exactly the one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, the real numbers inside the model v to the b and self-adjoint operators that have spectral resolutions inside this complete Boolean algebra. So we would say, uh, colloquially, we would say that the, uh, what the model v to the b thinks uh, of, the real, uh, of the real numbers inside are really the self-adjoint operators that are uh, inside the Boolean algebra which, uh, which serves for the for our Boolean valued model. So this, uh, this can be given a very, really nice interpretation of quantization because uh, <coughs> popularly uh, we consider quantization as a uh, interpretation of real valued quantities by self-adjoint operators. So here we have, right? This is of course really rough and general, but uh, I think philosophically it's very uh, intriguing. Um, well, uh, I have some time, so I also mentioned that the, uh, in the paper of Martin Davies, uh, it was given uh, even an interpretation that this Boolean context should be uh, should be understood as an analogs of uh, inertial frames of uh, for uh, of reference in special relativity. So, in this way, uh, we have Boolean subalgebra of L corresponds to inertial frame, uh, and uh, as we know, inertial frames are uh, are joined by the uh, Lorentz transformations, and on this side, uh, the Lorentz transformations should be uh, should be just unitary maps that join the uh, the, the Boolean subalgebras. <coughs> okay, so now we know that we have uh, many uh, many uh, Boolean subalgebras. We have many Boolean valued models, and each model carries its own uh, real line, R R B, so called. So what, what if we uh, thought that uh, the, the uh, large scale uh, smoothness of the space time is given by L uh, and uh, we want to parameterize it by the Boolean subalgebras. So we'd like to cover a space time with opens which are indexed by the uh, complete Boolean subalgebras of L. And of course one could uh, see uh, there is at this point already it's a hidden reason because we cannot enlarge uh, any Boolean subalgebra to the whole um, uh, whole uh, complete OML. So probably there is no chart that would give us uh, uh, globally our space time. And now there comes also a second point of the construction. Uh, so from the quantum mechanical point of view, um, uh, from the quantum mechanical point of view, uh, our reals come from the Boolean valued models. But uh, in order to, to do, for example, uh, uh, general relativity, we would like to have uh, one model of real numbers. And this one model, the one unique model of real numbers, can be provided by the uh, second order theory of uh, complete ordered fields. One can show that uh, there is a unique, even up to unique isomorphism uh, model of these real numbers. And we uh, assume that the large scale space time is modeled by, this, uh, by these reals. Um, whenever the, the quantum mechanical, uh, quantum mechanically, uh, these reals come from the first order uh, first order, order reals inside the Boolean valued models. Uh, yeah, so this, this is this substitution. So we substitute for each uh, Boolean subalgebra of L, we substitute RB for R, R where R is the second order uh, model of, of this theory. Uh, okay.
Well, this is the construction. So suppose that the, our spacetime is an n-dimensional topological manifold, and we have the op uh, and we have the open uh, cover. And as we said, each open is indexed by the uh, by some uh, complete Boolean subalgebra um, uh, of, of our uh, quantum OML. Now we require that uh, each uh, u alpha is uh, deformorphic to the uh, to the uh, large scale R n, and each u alpha is a classical limit in the sense of of this correspondence. It is a classical limit of some little u, which comes from the uh, reals uh, uh, inside the Boolean uh, valued model. So now, suppose that this cover is a smooth cover. Uh, so this is the crucial assumption that whenever uh, some two uh, Boolean subalgebras of OML are not commutable, it holds that its sum uh, cannot be inside the, our cover. And this assumption is, uh, it's, not, uh, um, it's not fully, um, um, it's not fully provable up to the point. Uh, so, so this is uh, some, some additional assumption. Uh, then when one can show that whenever L is not Boolean, so it is a, a true OML, uh, there always exists some family of Boolean uh, subalgebras such that uh, the sum over this family cannot be in U. Hence, total, in total, uh, in total uh, sum over whole U cannot be in U. Uh, While well, we know that the, the, uh, our cover U is a topologi topological cover, the sum over U has to be topologically uh, Rn, but it cannot be smoothly equivalent to Rn, since we have uh, this condition for the uh, for the uh, smooth atlas. Um, <coughs> uh, yes, so, so at this point I should say something about the exotic smooth structures. Um, so by definition, exotic smooth structures on, uh, on uh, Rn, and we, uh, we bound ourselves only to the, to the case uh, Rn, uh, this is the one uh, this is the exotic, this is the smooth structure non deformorphic to the standard, which is compati compatible with topology. Uh, and the, there was given a quite convenient criterion that the smooth structure of, on Rn is exotic if and only if it is not equivalent to the one element atlas, simply because if, if it would be, then it would be automatically, automatically deformorphic to the Rn. And now comes the, the, the important theorem that if n is not equal to 4, then there are no exotic smooth structures on Rn. The only special case is uh, R4, and uh, in this uh, case, in fact, it admits uncountably many exotic smooth structures. So this, if there's, uh, if you came into question uh, whether mathematics, uh, uh, f whether mathematics points at some dimension uh, um, of, of uh, manifold, this would be the case. Th this is the case really uh, excluded from the, from, the, from the whole family. So we come to the conclusion that if the space-time smoothness of M, and now we assume that M is Rn, is to be driven by this quantum mechanical lattice of projections of initial quantum singularity, it has to be an exotic R Rn. Uh, Well, from the uh, previous theorem, we know that it has to be four-dimensional. Moreover, as shown by Swatkowski, it has to be curved, because no exotic R4 can be flat. Um, yeah, and this, this is the remark uh, in the end, that uh, we would like to uh, somehow justify this uh, translation of the, uh, of, from the Boolean uh, subalgebras to the uh, open covers in the, from the categorical uh, uh, point of view. Um, yeah, there, there, there also so this is the case for the uh, for the later study that there is also a correspondence between real numbers in the uh, OML valued sets uh, between self-adjoint operat operators in inside OML 
and the, uh, the serial numbers, but uh, since V to the L is not ZFC model, uh, it's, not, it's not so easy to, to, uh, to study this. So this would be the, uh, uh, this would be the framework for, for later studies to define the uh, category of Boolean subalgebras of L and the category of open uh, subset of, of uh, Rn and smooth maps. And we would like to uh, construct a functor that would um, translate, for example, the, the following, uh, following content. So, for example, the orthomorphism on the OML should uh, uh, correspond to, to the formorphism of the whole uh, manifold. And uh, one has to check how, how these Boolean subalgebras behave under, uh, under orthomorphisms. And uh, I should also add that uh, it is not the first time exotic smoothness uh, uh, is present uh, coming from, the, from changing of model or categories. Uh, since uh, a year ago, uh, Krull shown that the, when we locally modify uh, R4 by a so-called basal topos, then the R4 has to be an exotic one. So the basal topos changes the smooth structure of the underlying manifold. Uh, one can also find some, uh, some, vague, uh, uh, some vague remarks about the correspondence between uh, genericity of differential topology and model theoretic genericity in the, uh, in the book of Shaitin, Doria and Koshta. But these are very, uh, these, these are very general and uh, not precise. And of course, exotic R4 were uh, shown to, uh, to create uh, additional gravitational sources. So this, uh, this is obviously uh, important for, uh, for theory of gravity. Uh, what are the other possibilities? Well, uh, space-time could be of different topology. For example, it uh, could be not just simple R uh, Rn. And uh, I suppose that different uh, options will be mentioned in, in tomorrow's uh, talk by Jerzy. Uh, of course, there's the, the, this, this first remark that the initial singularity is not described only by quantum mechanics, but uh, this we discussed in the beginning. Um, <clears throat> and also this, this, uh, this conclusion is very general. Okay, we have, we have exotic smoothness of, on uh, Rn, but we don't know which one, right? So there is no, uh, up to the point, there is no method to, to, uh, to point to the, to the, uh, uh, to the exactly one, the uh, exotic smooth structure. But uh, I encourage you to look at the, uh, this uh, archive uh, where uh, Krull and Asselmeyer Maluga showed that uh, a, a very specific model of exotic smoothness can result in a, in a, a quite astonishing uh, calculus of, uh, of uh, cosmological constant. So this is their result. Of course, it depends heavily on the Hubble's constant, which is not um, measured uh, with a great precision, but this is the uh, result from the 2015 uh, of the Planck mission. Okay. Thank you.